My guest today is Andrea Saltarello. Andrea, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm fine. I uh, have been locked down for six weeks now. I do live in Italy, born and bred in Milan, but, but it's okay. It's okay. How are things going in Milan? I know that Italy has been really hard hit by, hit uh, by this uh, coronavirus. Yeah. Well, uh, Milan is the, the capital of Lombardy, which is the, um, the region uh, which has been struck the most uh, here in Italy, in both, in both in terms of how many people, it, people fell ill and the death toll, but numbers are becoming better day after day. So I, I, I hope we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. tunnel. I hope so. It seems like the rate is slowing. It's still going up, but it's going up at a slower rate than it was a week ago. Really hope so. And how are things going over there in the USA? We're a little bit behind. We're starting to feel the effects here that you felt a couple of months ago. And as a result of that, we started. To, we were slow to react. And uh, But we've been home for a couple of weeks. And um, mm. the stores are closed and the bars are closed and they, yesterday here in Chicago they closed the parks so mm. people weren't people weren't staying home on nice days they were going out to the lake and so the mayor made a decision that no we're just gonna you can't go to those parks anymore well what, what, what I get listening to the news is that there's this this pattern where people start denying so no no we, this is not going to be a, um, a problem for us and then it becomes a problem and, and then you react in some way and you start your path in order to recover as a country. I think that's exactly, you described exactly what happened here. And hopefully we, we didn't react too late. Uh, anyway, I hope that your family and you are, are, are well and, and get through this yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes, we are. Thank you for asking. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I want to talk to you about um, inclusion. I know you're. Uh, this is uh, something that you're passionate about. Uh, in fact, you told me something about your father that uh, sparked this. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, my, my father was deaf, and he became deaf all of a sudden hmm. uh, because of an otitis, acute otitis, and he had to, to go under surgery, and he had uh handbill stirrup removed so he, he basically couldn't hear anymore okay well um still still uh he could hear by means of bone conduction glasses so he had to put these glasses on and what they do they vibrate behind your ear mm -hmm. so and and this vibration uh conveys the, 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 the message of sound to your brain, okay? That, wow. That's, wow, that, that, back in the 70s, back in the 70s. And, but point is that you, you, you can hear, but you can hear to an extent, because as the volume becomes higher, um, at a certain point, it basically becomes, it, it, it turns into noise. Okay, so you basically can't hear anymore. So uh, uh, you, you could talk, to l listen to people, hear people talking, okay, but he couldn't go to, to a gig or to the cinema to a play because uh, the, the, the volume would uh, either be too low or too high. Oh, wow. So he could never go to a Depeche Mode concert. No. <laughs> which I know you're a huge fan of. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, indeed. So, and, and, and this is, you know, this is something that, that, that really uh, strikes me because I'm so, I'm so fond of music. I'm so fond of live music. And something I dear so profoundly, uh, he was banned from enjoying, from enjoying it. Okay, uh, but I, I, I think that in, in hindsight that uh, having this piece of technology doing, doing the magic, the magic of making, allowing my dad to, to, to hear, played a part in becoming, in falling in love with technology and being 
what I am, uh, a software developer, an architect, a professor, and, you know, and the like. So, so you're uh, building accessibility into the software that you're building? Uh, I try to. Uh, uh, let, 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 let's just me recount you uh, a little anecdote. Uh, uh, back in 2004, uh, I went to TechEd in Barcelona. Or, or uh, no, it was in Amsterdam. Sorry, it was in Amsterdam. And during the keynote, um, Jean Philippe Courtois, which at the time was serving as uh, Microsoft EMEA vice president, uh, asked a um, visually impaired man to get on stage. And he, he was blind. And what he had to do was basically. Uh, surfing the web and using uh, a narrator, okay? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it really, um, I, I know it's a, it's a strong word, but it really devastated me that w- what I was looking was a, uh, was a, a man struggling doing what uh, I was doing on an ordinary basis. Basically, um, surfing the web, uh, having a look at some websites, reading news. And so you just don't even think about it. You just take for yeah, granted that that's yeah, easy to do. Yeah. And it wasn't for him. Uh, uh, you nailed it. I was taking them for granted, yeah. but they weren't. Okay. Um, and and I, I, I felt guilty. Uh, what... I really felt guilty and ashamed because I, the son of a deaf, wasn't uh, taking any action in order, make it, in order to make my software accessible or more accessible, okay? And so I kind of started my path towards uh, understanding what being more inclusive means, okay? Uh, and, and that was it, and this, and this is still it, because it's four years now I have been organizing uh, a conference here in Italy, a two-day conference pertaining to development of accessible software. Oh, really? Wow. Really. What is that? Uh, well, it, it's all about uh, making people aware of the, the importance of colors in, in software or nowadays in how taking advantage of uh, speech recognition and natural language parses can make software more accessible because we don't have to click anymore. We, we can ask for information to the software via our, own, our very voice. Okay, so just asking a bot uh, how much effort or um, how much did we net last year? How, how much are we grossing? And, and that's about answering to you. Uh, so this is so visually impaired people can uh, use your software, thinking about that. Yeah, and it's not just about uh, visual impairments. There's the, your father who was deaf. There's uh, yeah. people that are, uh, oh, have... Uh, I don't know, a broken arm or no arm or, you know, there's a lot of different ways to make things accessible Uh, to different groups of people. I I, I think that the the perspective from which we should be looking at this topic, inclusion, is that every once in a while uh, we become impaired in some way because we we, we might break an arm, as you said. Yeah, it might be temporary. It might be temporary. You know, uh, my, my mom, she, she suffered from diabetes, okay? And every, uh, once per year, she has to, to take this test, which um, makes her blind for a couple of hours. Wow. Okay, because, yeah, because it's, it's, it's they, they, they kind of beam her eyes with some kind of ray. I, 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 I'm not into the technicity yeah, of but the okay. symptoms are that she uh-huh. can't see for hours yeah so it might be temporary so we should be aiming at a more inclusive 
world. Right. Yeah. She should be able to still use her phone during that time. She should yeah. still be able to uh, use apps during Definitely. that time. Definitely. Give, give me an example of uh, an application that you've built that has accessibility built into it. Oh, okay. Uh, we built an ERP system uh -huh. and we, we implemented a, a bot uh, on top of um, Microsoft Bot Framework to, to allow people to, to, to ask for information. That's something we did just last year. And we, we have um, a proof of concept of this kind of bot. Uh, we have a, um, an open source version, which we made available on GitHub. Um, send, send me that link, please. I'll add it to the show notes. Yeah, I, I will. And it, it even supports uh, an Alexa skill because if you want to be inclusive, you have to be, uh, would you say it's uh, pervasive over, it's pervasiveness over invasiveness. It's about uh, allowing users to use their own means, which means, okay, uh, you, you have an echo dot, fine. You, you, I'm, I'm going to allow you to use your echo dot. Uh, you, you, you have uh, a Skype account and you already have Skype on your phone and um, then I'm going to have you uh, to enable you to use the, the software you already have on your phone. Okay. So now, oh, interesting. So you can yeah. interact with this ERP system through yeah. your Echo or Echo yeah. Dot. Yeah. Um, and therefore, the, the, if you can't see, you can use it. And even if you can't pick up your phone or or type on your keyboard, you yeah. still allowing those folks to use it. Yeah, uh, that that our the the the, the, fun, the main idea behind this was okay. Uh, let's take this digital assistant and make them real assistants. Right. You mentioned that you are a professor. Uh, are you yeah. teaching this to your students as well? Yes. Uh, I, I do teach for the local university here in Milan, the Politecnico of uh, Milan, and I do teach AI and more precisely um, cognitive services. And I, I, I try to have the, the, the lessons I give, the lectures I give, being based on both business scenarios and inclusion scenarios. So it's going to be kind of a mixed bag. You, 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 it's not a t technology is is a means. It's technology is a tool uh, which we should be using for a better world. Okay, so a more efficient one, but yet a more inclusive one. Okay, and you're using that. Uh cognitive services to help with that which has things like vision recognition yeah. and voice recognition and optical yeah. character recognition are yeah, those, that, those are tools that you're teaching yes yes because you know uh, actually training a model from scratch is uh, is very 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 hard okay and uh, I, I think that if you if you what you're doing for a living uh, either as a freelance developer or as a company is to uh, to work on your product, uh, you should focus on adding value to your users and in that way taking advantage of domain specific pre-built pre domain specific models such as the ones supported by cognitive services is, mm -hmm. is what you should be doing. Yeah, I, I, I've done a talk uh, at conferences and user groups on cognitive services. And I always start, t start with this video that Microsoft displayed like, oh gosh, like four years ago uh, about the, the blind fellow who oh. is, uh, is, reads the menu through his phone and can tell whether who he's talking to. And he does it through a device where he swipes the key. And even though that video is, uh, I think it's at least four years old from Build or some big conference, it's still relevant. It still resonates with people because it's such an amazing story, and it still moves me to tears every yeah. time. Change that guy's life. It. Yeah, technology I, changed that guy's life. 
it really moves me to tears and it's uh it's i i think starting from january yeah uh in january i started developing um a, a clone okay my poor man clones of that app of uh, seeing ai app okay. uh yeah yes and uh, i made the source code available on github my aim is to have a proof of concept which works on both ios and uh, and android mm -hmm. uh, whereas the, the original app the seeing ai app is uh, only available for ios and yeah. And the, the name I gave to this app is Rossi. Why, why Rossi? Rossi is, um, Rossi is a, a girl from Bulgaria, but she's been living in Italy for 10 years now. And two, two years ago, uh, you know, every year when we organize our conference pertaining to the development of accessible software, so the, the accessibility days, we try to have some kind of um, side experience, okay, uh, such as uh, having dinner while blind being blindfolded, okay, so you have, and two, two, two years ago, uh, we, we asked uh, Bring people to um, to take uh, those who wanted to attend the, the, the dinner uh, to to the restaurant uh, with uh, the attendees being blindfolded. So I I had to 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 get from the conference center to the restaurant uh, by feet while being blindfolded and having to cross roads and 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 the like okay and rossi was the the, uh, the, the girl who uh, took me to the restaurant and, and she's I, blind and she's blind uh, she lives in bologna so she knew uh the the the, the path we had to to take to get to the restaurant and she knew when we do had to to cross the road still i was frightened to death really really frightened to death and and all of a sudden she asked me uh andrea you you're you're, you're shaking why are you shaking uh and what i told her was okay uh, you know uh, in, in in my youth I, I i have been um french food fighter which is a french uh, french box so the uh, the, the one in which you can uh, blow your opponent with uh, both hands and feet, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I told her, I, I, I have never been so frightened, not even when I was in the ring fighting, okay? Uh, because be, being unable to see, wow, it was, it, it, it was really, really, really a tough, a real, a really tough experience. And so she was the, 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 um, uh, the girl who made me see during that you know, jump. Huh? And, and, and so I, I, I wanted to, to, to give her name to the, to the app I'm developing. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I think what, you're, what I'm hearing is that uh, you develop more empathy for people with a disability like blindness after this experience. Yeah. You got to understand a little taste of what they went through, go through every day. And the more I the, the more I get in touch with these people and the more I try to relate to them and to understand what it means to uh, to be impaired in some way, mm -hmm. the more this empathy develops. Yeah. Are, for, I'm I'm curious about your conference. Um, it's access accessibility days. It's called, right? Yeah. Accessibility and are, days. are there uh, things that you do in the conference to make the conference itself more accessible? Uh, yes. Uh, first, you have to carefully choose uh, the venue. Okay. We, we, which is why we we always try to to ask to unions 
so, such as the unions of blind people, Italian union of, of deaf people, in order to use, uh, to, to, to organize the conference uh, using their headquarters, because, uh, because their venues are accessible by, by default. Mm. And then you have to, to take care of about a lot of things, such as having um, uh, lighter colors used to um, kind of trace paths or making objects more visible or, uh, or use sounds in order to guide people. A, a lot of things you, you, you understand as you, you know, as you improve as an organizer, as right. you keep organizing these kind of events. Um, if somebody is just starting to think about accessibility and inclusion, um, where's a good place for them to start? Um, what I do, what, what I'd recommend doing is to uh, Google or Bing for G-A-A-D, which is an acronym uh, which stands for uh, Global Accessibility Awareness day because we we have one day the 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 third uh thursday of may each year is the gaad so a lot of um user groups and companies a lot of events uh, are organized organized within that time frame and so it's uh, it's a way to get in touch with meetups and user groups and create your your network which is going to help you in your own area so uh, th those are the people uh, who know w w what resources are available in your area in order to better you know approach this kind of topics hmm. well uh, may is just next month is that is your conference then aligned with this global yeah uh, accessibility awareness day yeah uh, we're going to have the conference on the 22nd and 23rd of may mm. uh, I'm, i haven't looked but i'm guessing that one of those is the third thursday of may is that right <laughs> Uh, okay, and uh, that's, uh, I assume, since you're in Milan, that that'll be a virtual conference this year. It'll be online instead of in person, right? Yeah, I, I think we will be using Microsoft Teams. We, we're just, uh, we started playing with the uh, live events feature, and okay. I, I think that's what we're going to, to do. We are, yeah. or, or we might have a mix of live events and meetings. Both by uh, both via Microsoft Teams, because yeah, uh, is there a, is there a limit to the number of people that can join? A, a meeting, uh, yes. A team event. Yes, two two hundred fifty per okay. per per meeting. Whereas uh, the the cap for live events is ten k, which is which oh. is uh, uh, quite That's a lot. A lot <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is uh, okay? Is that in Teams? Uh, live events are part of Teams. Yeah. Oh, I'm not familiar with that. So I guess it's uh, like, if you're making it virtual, are you going to let the world, like if I, I here I am in Chicago, will I be able to attend? Yeah. Uh, it's much absolutely. easier for teams than it is to fly to Milan. <laughs> I've never actually been to Milan, but I, I would love to go there. I, I yeah. was in uh, Rome in the fall, and it's the first time I've been to Italy in 25 years. It's, you, you, you uh, know, I love Italy. You know, uh, actually, um, Milan, for uh, for tourism purposes, okay. Uh, when it comes to tourism, Milan was uh, the second most visited uh, city in in Italy. Really? By to really. So first Rome, second uh, second Milan, and then Florence and Venice. I don't know which one was third, and we'll see what after this uh, coronavirus thing. What will happen in terms of tourism but you should definitely pay a visit to milan i will come and then we'll meet up we'll hang out wow i can't wait for that <laughs> great it would well, be my uh, it it would be my pleasure and privilege to host you around my my, my city oh uh, thank you i'm going to hold you to that 
<laughs> uh, Andrea, thank you so much for your time. This has really been enlightening uh, for me. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. And you please stay safe. You too. You too. Technology is what allowed my father to, to hear. Technology is what is allowing me these days to, to talk with friends all over the world, such as uh, David. This very morning, uh, I chatted with a friend of mine who lives in Genoa, asking how are things going over there. So, technology is what something we can build upon in order to make life better for us, for our friends and for, 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 for all the people.